Here's a walkthrough of an app that I'm developing for iOS. It's called Vocab Master. One of the reasons that I'm developing this app is because I've studied many foreign languages, including Mandarin, Japanese, and Korean. In the process of studying for those, I always create these paper flashcards, which I use as ways to memorize vocabulary. On the screen here, I have a different list of vocabulary that I need to memorize. And what I'll actually do is write down a flashcard with a Korean word on one side and then the English translation on the other side. The flashcards are really manual in that they take a bunch of time to create. And once I'm done using them, then I just throw the flashcards away and it's a waste of paper. A while ago, I created a Python command line program that would allow me to automatically import this CSV and upload all of these vocabulary terms so that I could use a computer program to study. A limitation here is that I could only run command line on my desktop. So I wanted to learn how to use a mobile development environment to enable me to study on a mobile phone. There are a lot of flashcard apps out there. And without going into details of what each of those are, oftentimes these studying apps cost anywhere from $20 a month to paying $75 or $100 for a full year. But the challenge for me has always been that if I don't fully understand whether or not the app is going to work for me, I'm always hesitant to pay for the app. And so the app that I'm developing, I hope to offer not just to myself, but many others who are in need of a very simple flashcard app that does one thing really well, which is that it allows you to study vocabulary in a very easy and concise manner without ads, fees, or any other complexities. So with that, let's get into the app demo. I'm running the app demo on the Xcode simulator. So there are a few limitations here. One of the big ones is that I've only got a mouse pointer. I don't have the mobile keyboard. So some behaviors such as pulling up the keyboard to type foreign languages is actually not enabled here. Despite that, let's get started. Keeping that limitation in mind, I'll walk you through what the experience for a user might look like if they wanted to input vocabulary and study digital flashcards on their phone. In this app, the first screen that you'll see is a setup page. On the setup page, there are two core actions that you need to take as a user. The first one is setting up the number of test rounds. The test rounds refers to how many times you're cycling through the flashcards. So to give you an example, when I'm using paper flashcards, I'll typically go through anywhere between 50 to 100 rounds before I really feel like I need to evaluate how much more to study. So just for the purposes of demonstration here, I'm going to set the test rounds to 10. And that means that I'll cycle through the flashcards 10 times. In the second section here, you want to enter your vocabulary pairs. I've written Chinese and English here as an example, but you could really study for any language that you want. I only have access to the English keyboard here. So I'm going to simulate what it would look like by spelling out the romanization of the actual Chinese vocabulary. So in this example, I want to type Pinguo, which is apple and I'll add the flashcard. Notice that you have to add at least one vocabulary pair before the begin test button appears. So I'll add the flashcard. I'm gonna add another one just so that the demonstration makes more sense here. I'm going to enter xi gua, which is watermelon in English. And going along with the theme of fruits, let's add another one. Xiang jiao, which is banana, and cheng zi, which is orange. Tao zi, which is peach. Okay, so once you've added all the vocabulary that you want to study, you can click Begin Test. And this Begin Test brings you to the second screen here, which is the core app experience. This is the flashcard test, and it pulls from the vocabulary dictionary that you just inputted. So the first term here is Pinguo, which I know is Apple. So I'm going to click Correct if I got that correct, and click Incorrect if I did not know the answer. In round two, you'll see Pinguo again, and, and it's because our example dictionary is very limited. So it's a lot more likely that we'll see the same word show up round after round. But you notice here that based on the 10 rounds that I initially set, it lets you know which round I'm on. So Pinguo, I know is Apple, so to correct again. Now let's say that I forgot what that term meant and I'm really racking my brain to remember. You can actually cheat a bit here by clicking show answer, watermelon. So now that you know the answer, you give yourself a benefit of a doubt that it was somewhere in the back of your mind, but you forgot it, but you'll want to move on somehow. It really depends on you on how you want to evaluate yourself for that. I'm going to say that that was incorrect because I clearly didn't know the answer. 
and then Shigua shows up again. This time I know it's Watermelon. And showing that hint in the last round reinforced this, so I'm gonna click correct. Xiangjiao is Banana. It's correct. Shigua is Watermelon. Correct. Pingguo is Apple. But I'm gonna say incorrect because I wanna show you what happens to the incorrect words that we get through this test process. Taozi is Peach. Okay, great. So now I'm on the final round. And once you finish your last round, which you can see up here around 10 of 10, meaning that you've cycled through all the rounds that you initially set, you'll see your scoreboard here, which tells you the total number of rounds that you got correct, total rounds incorrect, and assigns you a score. So my test score is 80% because I got 8 out of 10 rounds correct. You'll also get to see a list of the vocabulary that you've gotten incorrect. So I got pingguo and taozi incorrect, which were apple and peach. So this is a reminder for me to go and study those words again. And when I'm ready to study again, this reactivates the entire test rounds, resets at zero, so that you can cycle through once more. Let's say that you're done studying this set of words. What you can do is delete the entire dictionary that you've inputted and start over. Make sure that you're serious about this, because once you click this button, then all of the vocabulary that you've input will be deleted. So if I click this, it'll reset the entire session here, including my test rounds and my entire vocabulary dictionary. So we can reset all of those parameters once again. Now that we've gone through the app, I'm going to show you a little bit of behind the scenes and what's happening under the hood in my Xcode project. So I'm going to walk you through the three main files here, our main storyboard and our two view controllers. At a high level, our main storyboard is wrapped with a navigation controller, which allows us to have some consistency in things such as the titles and back buttons. On the main storyboard, we've designed two main screen views. The first one is the setup screen, and the second one is the flashcards itself. We connected two screens with a show segue that's triggered by this begin test button here. Now let's move on to the view controllers. The first view controller defines our first screen, which is the user setup. You'll see here that I've defined IP outlets for all of the labels and buttons on the screen so that I can manipulate them. There are a few things that happen when the screen first loads. There's some code in here that makes sure that the warning signs are not triggered unless they meet certain criteria. We also have a function here that allows us to tap out of the keyboard when we're on a mobile app. Some of the critical variables that we define here include an empty dictionary that allows us to store the vocabulary pairs. We also define a round number, which is equal to what the user inputs. There's a function here called add vocab button that allows for us to add the user input into the dictionary as key value pairs. And finally, we have a function here that prepares for the segue and passes the user inputs, including the round number and the vocabulary list to the next screen. So on the next screen, which is controlled by our flashcard view controller file, there are a few things that happen. The first one is that we define all of our variables up here. We actually have two empty arrays that we initialize, correct and incorrect. These two arrays help us to store all of the terms that the user gets correct and incorrect, which helps us generate a score at the end. On load of this view controller, the first thing that happens is that we pass a random element from the dictionary into the placeholder label on the screen. So this is where the randomized vocabulary will show up, and this is the core flashcards feature in our app. Coming back to the flashcard view controller, there are many functions here that take place upon pressing a button. Some examples of that include what happens when the user clicks the show answer button, which helps to bring in the value pair from the key that is currently randomized in the flashcard view. When a user presses correct or incorrect, it appends that vocabulary key into the array. Then we move on to the next flashcard. The next flashcard logic basically says, if the current round number that we're on is less than what the total number of rounds set by the user is, then we continue to randomize the vocabulary and show them in the app. Otherwise, we end the study session by showing the score table and then hiding the correct and incorrect buttons to end the user's interaction with the test. A few other functions that happen throughout include updating the UI. And this function, update UI, 
updates the round numbers that appears at the top of the screen so that the user knows how far they've progressed into the study. And here we have a function titled update score table. Update score table are the scores that tell you how many you got correct, incorrect, and a percentage score. And this is taking from the arrays that we created, the correct and incorrect. If you got a word incorrect multiple times, it'll actually only show that word in the list once. And finally, at the end of the study session, the user has the option to study again or delete and start over. So that concludes my walkthrough of the Vocab Master app. I hope that this walkthrough was helpful.